I want to see this guy again. <laughs> I want to see his badge and his ID. <laughs> From donning a new identity to working in the same conditions as their task force, some undercover bosses nailed their disguises. But one employee was so suspicious that he actually asked the boss to prove his identity. First up, we have the CEO of DHL, Phil Coachman from Australia, who joined the company 30 years ago and has worked his way to the top. He disguises himself as Eddie King, who's just arrived from Australia looking for a new job. Phil is more accustomed to sharp suits and, well, he's close to retiring at 64. So I think he's going to have a tough time pulling off this gig. Digital is a pretty physical job, actually, particularly in the front line. I would hope that I'm up to it physically. You see, DHL is a real hands-on job, especially on the front line, and Phil didn't want to mess things up. Did you know that the Brits are the biggest internet shoppers in the world? They spend about 68 million pounds online and an average of 2,000 per person. So it's quite obvious that they'd expect some reliable and fast deliveries. And that's where DHL comes in. The company has a stunning turnover of 800 million pounds, and they have a group of 4,500 employees operating year-round. With this insane growth, Phil's got some major concerns about whether customers' packages are landing where they should, and more importantly, when they should. Any failure to do so would land the company in trouble, and that would be an absolute nightmare. We might be pushing the whole network too hard. With the result, shipments ultimately don't get delivered on time, which would be a disaster. Apparently, 225,000 parcels which were promised failed to be delivered during a particular Christmas. And you know how disheartening that can be. Now, in a business as competitive as this, Phil knows that his company is a target for all his rivals who will not fail to take any opportunity to poach his customers, which is why he made the drastic decision to go undercover. Cut to the moment when he walked into his very first sting for the day, and this is where he meets Vivian, one of the 400 call center operators, and she's to be his guide for the day. Hello, Viv, how are you? Very well, thanks. How are you doing? Very well, thank Good. you. Good. You see, Viv and her team are trained to take over 100 calls a day and have a target of less than four minutes to handle each one. She first gives Phil a rundown on how things work at the center. And once they got to the real deal, Viv had to share something really important with Phil. Sometimes people just want to get things off their chest and then once they've had their little moment, ask for the relevant information okay. as you would yep. with any call. So it was important for the operators to make the customer feel comfortable rather than stick to the issue alone. You see, it's always good to give time to the customers to talk, and once they're done, the operators get into the relevant information. The amazing operator Viv has gone under a six-week ramped up training, and now this is the time for the CEO to taste it. But is Phil up for the job? You have to check this out. Hello, you're through to Eddie. Good afternoon. How can I help you? Hi, Eddie. I'm just calling from Australia. You're calling from Australia. You see how they handle a tough situation? When a customer's parcel went missing, Viv and the team approached the problem effectively well. The call center procedure dictates the missing parcels and are routed to specific operators. And in this case, it happens to be Viv's colleague, Kath. Meanwhile, Phil was itching to solve the problem right there. But the company's red tape is holding him back. No, Kath has already told you she'll call her back. Oh, no, so look, look, you're wrong. Just go back and say... Kath will call you back Kath in a few you. moments. Okay. Hello, Marianne. So you see what happened there. Well, yes, the employee was trying to stick to the rules of the company, but Phil thinks that it's hindering the service rather than making it better. Anyway, since he's undercover and not the boss, he had to give in to Viv's instructions and hung up on the call. However, Viv was upset. This new guy who's still looking for the job was a bit too overbearing for her. He was here for one day, and he was acting like he was the one who'd be calling the shots. But this is what concerned Phil. She might have been a victim of people promising to call her back in the past and never got a call. Well, that's probably why the customer chose to wait on the call, and I think his concerns were pretty valid. It is these kinds of small cracks in the company that can land the entire business in thick soup. With that out of the way, the next stop Phil was headed towards was to meet those who work in the front line. This is the same depot that delivers to customers in remote locations. And for this, Phil starts his journey with a 31-year-old Martin who covers 600 miles across the city delivering orders to the customers. Eddie. Hi, mate. Martin. Martin. You're right. Good to see you. You'll be stunned to watch how the CEO of the company could pull this off. This is going to take us back to where we were earlier on. I just don't understand why it wouldn't take me on that A51. Of course, we're going the wrong way for that. You see, Eddie, a.k.a. Phil, was way too slow behind the wheels. 
The delivery, which should have ideally taken about eight minutes, took a whole half hour to reach. But that's not even the most shocking thing, because what Martin said next was even crazier. Well, the theory is, down the road in Telford, the, the starting wage is about £3,000 more a year. If you're working hard every day, you'd hope that you're paid the same as your colleagues. Absolutely. Phil was shocked to know that the frontline guys who did most of the job and put in most of the hours from their day were paid the least. And this was a very sad situation. Do they deserve a hike? Well, sure they do. And is Phil ready to give one? You're about to find out soon. But before that, let's take a look at what Phil was up to in his next pit stop, which was the shipment area. Once there, he meets up with a new trainer, Graham, and almost immediately picks up on the job. You must be Graham. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. What's your name? Eddie. Eddie, all right, Eddie boss. King, how are you? Once the briefing was over and done with, Phil then decided to get his hands dirty. Our man had to move the parcels through the warehouse quite literally. And trust me, it isn't an easy job. But will Phil be able to pull it off? Let's see what happened. From now, I'm going to start timing you. Whoa. One, five seconds. What? This one hasn't got a thing on it. Seven seconds. <laughs> I'll do that one later. That. Phil had to process 17 parcels every minute. And of course, he couldn't do it. But that wasn't the only concerning thing that happened. It appeared like Graham was beginning to get suspicious of Phil. And now that would be a really big nightmare for any undercover boss. I don't know. I'll look at people's hands. There's no dirt there. It looks like he's been in an office for a long while. When you ask certain questions, just don't seem right. And that's when, out of nowhere, he dropped the bomb. Who are you really? <laughs> Who are I really? Who yeah. are I really? <laughs> and well, it looks like Phil's cover just got busted. And it was time for the big reveal. Of course, this was going to be a secret for the rest of the day. But between the two, everything was now out in the open. Okay, the truth. But have you, have you heard of this um, un undercover boss? Yes. It's on Phil. <laughs> Phil? Yeah. Just nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was now time to get more inside information from someone who works at Ground Zero. And Graham felt heavily underappreciated. And needless to say, this left Phil greatly disappointed. You think I'm a number, I'm coming into work and I'm going out. Yeah. That is a genuine feeling. Yeah. Why don't you ever come upstairs and praise the girls Last team, what they're doing. Yeah. And that would mean a massive amount yeah. from just one boss to say thank you. I hear what you're saying. Up next, Phil was headed towards the busiest region of the UK, responsible for a third of all the UK, London. Once there, he meets up with Marcelo, who has been delivering DHL parcels for about seven months. Marcelo. Nice to meet you. Are you ready to go? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Now, this guy was someone who had a happy and positive vibe, and this helped build a wonderful image with his customers. The two struck up a conversation, which is when Marcelo shared his experience with DHL. According to him, the company is 1,000 times better than any other because it gave a new life to an immigrant like himself. Marcelo then revealed more about his background and claimed that 14 years ago, he was forced to leave Brazil to find work to fend for his parents who were poverty stricken. Approximately how much money do you send home? I send about half my wage home. And DHL seemed to be the home he found far away from his own. You can say that it was quite an overwhelming experience for Phil after having gone undercover in his own company. And now that he had all the nitty gritty details of what was happening behind his back, it was now time to reveal his true identity. Well, of course, all the employees who were summoned to the head office were sweating bullets. They were dying of anxiety, wondering what had gone wrong, or maybe they were about to get fired. Why else would anyone call a regular employee to the company's main headquarters? Well, turns out Phil had a surprise for them. And when the boss walked into the room, you have to see how the employees reacted. Here comes Viv's reaction. You're not Eddie. I'm not Eddie. You're absolutely right. Okay. Well, clearly she was in for a shock, but what this next employee did was unbelievable. I'm talking about Marcelo, who kept smiling all through the big reveal, even when Phil presented a long list of gifts to him. This included a full-term job and a free ticket to go meet his parents back in Brazil. So what I've done is I've drawn you up a contract right. for full-time employment. I'm going to fly you home to Brazil. <laughs> you can go home and see your parents and That's have an early holiday. But here's the deal. Marcelo thought this was some kind of an elaborate joke. I mean, just take a look at how much he was in denial. I, I promise you, he's <laughs> the you? boss. Really? Of the whole of DHL UK. No way. When Marcelo asked to meet Phil again, I assumed he might want to thank him. 
But what Marcelo asked for was very unexpected. I want to see this guy again. <laughs> I want to see his badge on his IG. <laughs> well, can you believe that? Yep, Marcelo was so dumbstruck by everything that had just happened, he simply couldn't believe that the man was real. And once he got to meet Phil again, the boss was humble enough to prove his identity to his loyal employee. No questions asked. I just want to know if you're the Phil. <laughs> I thought you just an uh, actor. What, you... An actor? I can prove to you I'm not the actor. That's me. A little more hair with, with another governor. No way. <laughs> wow. Damn, Marcelo is one lucky guy. And it looks like someone did land some very unexpected gifts from the top boss. Speaking of gifts, now tell me who doesn't like chocolates, huh? Well, if you're wondering why I'm talking about chocolates, well, it's because we're now headed towards a factory which was started in 1907 by Richard Prudy. And I think you already know which company I'm talking about. It's the Prudy's Chocolate. This company has emerged as a staple in the Canadian West for the past 105 years with 61 stores across the country. Prudy's pretty much owns the market. Impressive, right? However, Karen, the CEO of 17 years, has been finding herself in the thick of the competition, especially in the region around Ontario, which is why she decided to go undercover and know the truth about her business. I'm Karen Flavel. I'm the CEO of Purdy's Chocolates, and I've been with Purdy's over 17 years. The challenges facing Purdy's are mostly just growing in Ontario. So Karen donned the role of Devin Norris, a 28-year-old rock chick who had spent the last five years touring around with her band and now expected a stable job for herself. Let's quickly jump to the first stop, which was the roving line where chocolates are made. But here's something that might surprise you. It is here where 30% of the employees have been working for nearly 30 years. Once there, she was welcomed by Kathy, and both of them got busy making the famous cherry chocolate. So some of these that you've made are going to go into the purple boxes. That's such a cool feeling, yeah, actually. Yeah. During this time, Devin decided to dive deeper into Kathy's work and personal life, which is when the employee revealed this. I had plans to retire, but I, I had a grandson, and uh, my husband and I chose to help our daughter and raise this boy. You did? Mm -hmm. Yes, Kathy found it important to keep the job and work her days off just to fend for her daughter and grandchild. And well, it's not common to see this level of commitment. Her grandson was now in college, and he had two more years to go. Well, Kathy herself had two more years to retire, Everything seemed to work just fine. Yeah, so he's got uh, two more years to go, and I have two more years before I retire, oh, so wow. things kind of just worked out. But Devin was moved beyond measure. But what happened in her next secret mission was even more overwhelming. The boss was now on a new mission to Alberta. This time around, Alicia was her trainer. But it looks like this one was sharp as the boss's cover was now about to be blown. Check it out for yourselves. There's a lot of product knowledge that you're probably not going to remember today, okay, but if okay. you can um, just grab one or two key things that I'm saying, that would really help for the okay. day. Was she getting onto something here? Those long stares and glances might just give away the boss's identity. But however, she continued the training, and soon enough, the doors were thrown open. And turns out, it takes a lot more effort and focus to handle customers on a daily basis. Oh, transaction not complete. Oh, sorry. And now I don't know where the bags are. But surprisingly, Alicia was impressed by the newcomer's enthusiasm and was just trying to appreciate her. Nice girl. Oh, bravo. You figured it out. 1307, please. Phew, that was surely a hard one. But just then, Alicia caught on to something which she never actually trained the newcomer for. Holy, did someone show you how to find out? Did, I'm just shocked that you found that by yourself. How the heck did she know how to punch the numbers in when she wasn't even trained for it? Alicia probably got a hint of something fishy right there. But anyway, things worked out in the boss's favor, and Alicia just let it pass. You catch on fast. Um, I had to regain my composure. Wow, that was a narrow miss right there. But now let's get into the real deal of the business. Turns out the shop ran full on most days, with truckloads of customers walking into the doors. But sadly, the shelves and stockroom were shockingly empty, and that's not a good look. Sometimes they even had to turn away their customers and ask them to come around next time once the stock came in. You get frustrated sometimes, things get left out, and, and that's hard. And customers are upset, why don't we get this product, why don't we get this product? And well, that's not how successful businesses thrive. And Devin had quite the message to take home from here. I definitely want to look further into their inventory levels. 
I would assume that if we can fill in those gaps, we would increase sales even more. Up next, the boss steps into the world of packaging, where she met up with Elsa, a veteran worker. Now, Elsa had one job to do, which was to foil the chocolates. And I can't tell you how important this little job is. And Elsa rocked at it. Even when the machine broke down, she handled the work perfectly well. Elsa did not just do her job. She did it with all her mind and heart. I mean, just look at her being so careful with each of those lovely treats. One that you are packing, try to put it nicely. Put it nicely. 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 Okay. From here, the chocolates move along the conveyor belt, and you can see Elsa's deft hands at work. I was really happy to see the dedication to the quality and the chocolates. They know that a customer is getting that box at the end of the day. Behind all the sweetness lay some really worrying issues. Where are you from, Elsa? From El Salvador, Central America. How long have you been here? 24 years. Yes, Elsa had to leave her home in El Salvador and make a move without her family tagging along. It has now been 24 long years, and here she was rocking the chocolate aisles like no other. With that, let's now cut to the big moment, which is time for the reveal. None of the employees could believe their eyes, but Kristen had only praise and appreciation for each of them. And of course, the most wonderful reaction was this. Do I look familiar? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that her eyes spoke the truth and revealed her feelings when the big boss dropped a really big surprise on her. Check it out right here. So uh, we're gonna pay for you and your boys to go back to El Salvador. Oh my God. <laughs> for your 60th birthday. And not just that, Christian granted her the tuition fee for her grandson's last two years of his college. She even took the initiative to make a better environment for her. Well, so that's a wrap for today. So which of these moments was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, guys.